Good morning. Good morning. I'm Father Dexter, and welcome to our Holy Eucharist service on this July 11th. I'd like to welcome everyone that's also watching at home. Go ahead and leave your name. We'll share that during announcements. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 615. Service begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Let us pray. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart, 
and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, who was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obededim to the city of David with, a, with rejoicing. When those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Psalm 24. On sorely by whole verse. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers in the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in its holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, 
might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. King Herod heard of the deeds of power for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said it is Elijah, and others said it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers, officers, and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament prophets often are misunderstood at seeing things in the future, like Nostradamus or the late night TV, Miss Cleo. They would offer confusing glimpses of what might happen in the future. Now the prophets mentioned in our gospel reading were, were messengers who spoke for God. They brought a divine message to the people of Israel that was needed at a particular time. They reminded the people of Israel of their responsibility under, under the covenant of God, that their religious observance and how they lived the rest of their lives were together they were inseparable and to the prophets the religious life was living a moral life you know the he wanted Israel to form a society where everyone was equal with a different uh, which was much different than the current world that they were living in when groups sought to accumulate wealth and power 
and mistreat the poor and the powerless, prophets would use strong imagery to shock the non-caring attitude of the wealthy and the comfortable members of society. Now, prophets like Nathan and Elijah stood up to the royal families, insisting that even powerful kings like David and Ahab must obey the covenant of God. The prophets challenged the comfortable beliefs and religious posturings of the people. Now, some prophets brought a message of hope and comfort to war-torn and exiled Judah. When the need of Israel changed, the prophets changed their tone. And we should remember that the prophets were representative of the task assigned to all the Israelites who, as God's chosen people, were to be a kingdom of priests mediating between God and the rest of the world. The Gospels present Jesus as the greatest of the prophets. His critiques of the religious leaders uh, during his day clearly reflect the prophetic tradition of Israel. Now, he urged them to make their lives match the devotion to the Lord using strong imagery in the prophetic fashion. He called those leaders a brood of vipers. Now, Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God, for instance, is grounded in the Old Testament prophetic vision of the restoration of creation. In fact, the, the book of Isaiah envisions a future time of peace and righteousness when all creatures were reconciled at peace with one another and with God. A, prof a prophetic vision of God's future meant to speak to us even today. Now, as the greatest of the prophets, Jesus revealed to us God's intention for formation for a new community. Jesus instituted a new society. He placed high moral demands upon those in the new covenant, not in order for them to receive salvation, but to express the salvation they were receiving from God. The Apostle Paul included prophecy with his ministry, teaching, encouraging, leading, giving, and his compassion as spiritual gifts given by God to members of the church. And just as the human body has many parts that all function differently, likewise, the church, which is the body of Christ, has many members with varied gifts to build up and keep the church healthy. A similar list in the book of Ephesians states that some people in the church are to be prophets. The saints must be equipped with their common ministry, and prophets are among those who work to achieve that end. Pursue love. Strive for the spiritual gifts. Paul urges all the church members at Corinth, especially that you can prophesy. Prophets speak to the believing community for upbuilding and encouragement and consolation because prophecy is meant to improve the entire community. The New Testament portrays the entire church as being a prophetic voice to the world. Paul, when he told the Corinthians that he would like to see all of them prophesy, he was endorsing Moses' wish that all people be prophets. And when Paul says that he would like to see all Corinthians prophesy, he echoes Moses' wish that all God's people be prophets. Now, we know the presiding Bishop Curry nationally is. We know diocesan Bishop Reed is. So I wonder who are the prophetic voices at St. Matthias 
for the local community of faith today. You know, we need to continually examine how our church is effective in the relationship between our worship and the efforts in the community. As we work together as a church about how to live, prophets call us to be faithful to Christ and keep us mindful of what he expects of his people as we make decisions and face challenges. Those with the gift of prophecy, sharing the good news, helps others to understand our life in Jesus, his vision in the world. The prophets, as Paul emphasized, build up the entire church to become that prophetic voice to the culture around it. Now, Jesus established and made possible by his life, death, and resurrection, a new way of being in the world. With his life and the cross, the church lives in the spirit, in the way of Jesus. Thus, the life of the church should serve as a prophetic voice to the surrounding community. Jesus depicted God's kingdom as made up of all nations and all peoples. Today, as a representation of the kingdom, the church is also to be one body which transcends the boundaries of the nation or ethnicity. Christians are still learning that God's concerns can't be identified with the concerns of a single nation. Indeed, it's one reason that everyone needs also to listen to the prophetic voices from churches in places like Asia and Africa and Latin America. When Paul, with Paul and Moses, we all pray for people to be prophets, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Christian tradition speaks often of the priesthood of believers, which means that all members are inter to intercede for and aid one another. And we should also speak of the prophethood of all believers, all people in the church. You and I have opportunity to share our faith with others. Now, as believers, we should prophetically proclaim the good news in love and hold one another accountable. Let our prayer be that we all may be prophets, concerned with the welfare and the life of the other people as God for God and as witnesses to the world. That's what God has called us to do. We are most human when we are fulfilling our destiny as living daily a life in praise of his glory. The church is by divine direction a missionary church. You know, we're a mission church, but all churches are missionary churches. We're called to love effectively, be part of that, that witnessing of our lives and words to the mercy of God who calls us Christ. Now, this isn't a calling, listen, you know, just with the apostles or just with the bishops or just with the priests or deacons it's a calling for all of us so here's a question do we show love to our extended families by showing and discussing the most important area of our life of our faith do our co-workers know that we are episcopalians and do they believe it from our words and our actions? We're Christians because we, like those that have gone before us, have confessed our belief in Jesus Christ and then held true to that belief through every part of our lives as we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we need to remember that in this holy place of sanctuary and prayer, it's easy to have faith. 
It's when we leave the church and step out into the world that our faith kicks in. And it's at that moment of pure understanding that we can be part of the living and active body of Christ. As we profess our faith in Christ, faith in the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we need to remember that our purpose, our faith, is in Jesus, the one who came to earth and lived among us, so that we may learn how to be one body, so that we can be examples to everyone as prophets, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in everything that we do to his praise and his glory. Amen. Turn to page 358. Let us stand and affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people can be found on page 387. We will be using form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we, that we all, all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the unity of the Anglican communion in the Episcopal Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for immigration and refugee ministries in West Texas. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops David and Rayford, our priest Dexter, and the diocesan seminarians. 
we pray for our President Joe and our Governor Greg. We pray for strength and healing for Allison, Tom, Joyce, Isabel, Karen, Anne, Ty, Clark, Sandra, Robert, Galena, Roberta, Roy, Lillian, Ophelia, David, Linda, Barbara, Ben, Janet, Gary, Edie, and John. We pray for our military, both at home and abroad, but especially for Haley and Nathan. We pray for persecuted Christians everywhere, especially in Nigeria, Sudan, Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Kenya, Sri Lanka, and Saudi Arabia. And we pray for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Divine Hospice, Hank, Southwest Family Life Center, our military ministry, Mission Divine, and Project MEND. Let's take a moment so you can add your own prayers and intercessions. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline thy ear to us, who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to thy will may be obtained effectively to relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in your way and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to welcome, we have Doug in Divine, also Robert and Sandra in Divine, and Samantha in Kentucky as well as those of you that will be joining later on. I do have an update on Karen. She hopes to be back at the end of August, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, from the diocese, which is always good to get inf notes from the diocese, I have um, two different items here. One of them is from Bishop High, and it says, Dear friends in Christ, thank you for all of your gift to my discretionary fund and I am thankful for your support, enabling me to help others in great need. Bless you all in your ministry at St. Matthias. Faithfully, Bishop Reed. And then I have a letter from the Diocesan World Missions. Thank you very much for coming with your parishioners, Rob and Erica, to the Diocesan offices on Thursday to drop off so many bags of clothing and other items. That was so generous of your community, and please know how much these items will help those in need. So, again, we're making a difference. You know, we're being that prophetic voice out to the community. So that's, that's wonderful. Uh, for those that are here 
in person. We are starting communion classes today after the, after the service. We're going to be in the back. But also, Meg made a blueberry buckle. Now, we've never heard of the word associated with food as being a buckle, but it's like a blueberry uh, crumb type cake thing. So Meg's laughing in the back. I, I, I don't describe her food. I just eat it. I don't make it. Um, yes. Yes. So, yes, we have, um, we have Brooke and Kristen, and Allison's going to be joining us. So, uh, let's see, anything else? No. Okay, so walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 686. Ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I've fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm safely to arrive at home. Jesus ought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace our greater debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Thy goodness, like a better, bind my wandering heart to Thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Yes, my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for Thy courts above. Prayer A begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. For whoever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, 
in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of the new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Savior, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those that would like to receive communion can come forward. You can receive the one in kind just with a host, or if you'd like to do intinction, you can do that also.
bring us the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Still trying to figure out how to take a mask off with hearing aids. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living member of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. God. The blessings of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 372. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.